The following is a hockey podcast out of Vancouver and Surrey, British Columbia. It'll only consist of a lot of puck talk and even more BS, or in actual words, banter and satire. Enjoy and as always, go Canucks, go. Trevor, people, everyone listening to this, I know why. Yes, I know why the Vancouver Canucks have not signed the Dakota Joshua yet. Uh, it, it's a secret reason, and I, I know it because I'm that guy. It's okay. because it's going to make one billion dollars. <laughs> Your Locked On Canucks, your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. That's what the playoffs is all about, baby. Game one in the books, and we're going to talk about it here on Locked On Canucks. My name is Trevor Beggs, co-host of Locked On Canucks, also a Canucks writer since 2013, currently with Daily Hive Vancouver. Before we get into this recap of the Canucks' first home playoff game in nine freaking years, we got to thank you for tuning in to Locked On Canucks. It is your Canucks every damn day part of the Locked On Podcast Network. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you go subscribe or follow us for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. Because again, we're going to have your back. We're going to be talking about this hockey team, well, for the rest of time, but specifically for this, what hopefully is a long playoff run. Let's get into, again, uh, one of the most exciting hockey games I've seen as a fan in quite some time. One of the har- Some of the hardest uh, cheers I've had in definitely a few years. Uh, but before we do that, we got to shout out our friends over at FanDuel, okay? Go make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. Let's get started here, okay? Talking about Ooh. what was a statement win. A statement win over the Nashville Predators uh, for a couple of reasons. We're going to touch on the first segment. We'll get into the nitty-gritty of, uh, you know, Begsy and Bowen's beauties from last night. Maybe some of the little things we saw out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we'll talk a bit about the lineup as well uh, to wrap up the show. Let's get into it. Uh, but before we do that, let me introduce my co-host. Someone who, uh, he might have cried last night. Cal Bowen. How's it going, brother? You know what? If I... If I were to cry, it would have been at the uh, 705 mark. You know what I'm saying? Like the player intros, the anthems, uh, me being around a lot of family. It really took me back to 2011. Uh, Just so blessed to be alive, breathing here on the West Coast, the best coast of Canada. And yeah, just being here, able to be in the moment and witness something that we haven't seen in 3,000 plus days. And that's Vancouver feeling like Vancouver again. It's beautiful. And it also just started. Straight up. Speaking of it just being started, Trevor Beck's Kyle Bound in the mornings every day. Uh, we'll try to get this up and live around 8.30 again every day to be that morning show for the Canucks fans on the internet, okay? For real. We got you. And I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say I think I know the reason why the Vancouver Canucks have not signed Dakota Joshua yet, okay? And, Begsy, we'll start with this. We'll, 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 we'll go into uh, this conversation with a bit of philosophy, okay? and. Uh, somewhat of uh, of a template where this organization, Rutherford, Alvin, and company, talk it part of this as well, maybe implementing some sort of uh, mind games with some of these UFAs. And I think Dakota Joshua is definitely one of them, okay? Uh, let's not sign these guys. Let's not extend these guys. Let's not reward these guys yet. Let's have these guys play like they still have a lot to play for. And I know they're Vancouver Canucks players, okay? The goal is to win a Stanley Cup. But individually speaking, if you don't have a contract, this is your moment to make millions and millions and millions of dollars more. Okay, for real. Because going into this offseason, you could make the argument that Dakota Joshua, you know, $3.5 million, $3 million, $3.75 million. But man, oh man, if he has more nights like he had yesterday, which is actually really possible based on how he's played the whole season, this guy's going to turn himself into a $4.5 million player. It, it really, it, It's really going to happen. And the Canucks, for them to go all the way, They kind of need their X factor because he is the X factor. I'm convinced of that to play like he did game in and game out because he is an outlier. He's actually highly skilled as well. He's intimidating and he's Dakota Joshua. Yeah, you talk about X factors and and I really do think there's a a few on this team aside from Dakota, but he's certainly one of the first guys that comes to mind because I mean, look at the numbers, right? This guy missed a quarter of the season and he still finished top 10 in hits, ninth overall in the NHL. And you saw that last night. I mean, 
I know JT Miller joke post game about how there wasn't even a puck out there in the first period. They were just chucking the body around, right? They were mm. doing everything they could to get the fans into it. And yeah, maybe I heard him on the shot clock a bit, but you know, going back to Dakota Joshua uh, again, what have we talked about time and time again on the show, Kyle, you know, the, the fact that the Canucks can roll three lines um, and they have three dangerous lines makes them a very, very dangerous hockey team. And a huge part of that is having Connor Garland and Dakota Joshua on your third line. And I mean, that was, that was tense moments last night, right? It was tense because, you know, I I think fans watching it myself, I felt this. The Canucks were the better team last night. Uh, and maybe the shots were close, but the Canucks were controlling possession. They had the puck in the offensive zone more than the Predators. They were throwing the body more, but they were still trailing, uh, with, you know, a little over 10 minutes to go. And, you know, they get that tying goal. And instead of just, you know, you know, and I talk and talked about, you know, the team took a breath after that. 12 seconds later, Garland and Joshua connect for the game-winning goal. And Lindholm. And, yep. And, and, and Lindholm, too, exactly. And he had a great game. But, I mean, Garland and Joshua have been doing that all season long. Dude, and, forever. Oh, Dakota Joshua, we've, I, you know, we I talked about the physicality. He's been great on the penalty kill. He was great on the penalty kill last night again with Lindholm. <sighs> uh, but the hands in front to kind of take that puck uh, it, while he's moving and then fire it past Soros uh, uh, mm. as he's moving in the direction. I mean, an unreal play by Joshua. Three points on the night. By the way, Dakota Joshua, <laughs> you know, early on here in the NHL playoffs is tied for the league leading scoring with three points. <laughs> no, that's unreal, man. Three points. I couldn't believe it. I forgot he got the assist on the Lindholm goal. And uh, Begsy, can you just answer my question? Like, do you think there's any uh, any of that <clears throat> incentive slash motivational tactic that this organization is doing with some of these guys? Because I feel as if you kind of need that in the playoffs. And I, I know it's kind of irrelevant, but I look at some teams that lose a lot of their good players after long playoff runs and yeah, it's the inevitable, but I wonder again, if it's because that's kind of the risk you take as an organization, it's like, you know what, man, sometimes players get comfortable after you give them millions after they finally made their dough. And we don't need these guys to be comfortable. Dakota Joshua has so much to play for. The entire NHL is going to watch, be watching him right now. And and you know what? We, we kind of mentioned Quinn Hughes in the same boat, right? Like, there's years and years and years where Quinn Hughes is getting absolutely no respect. That's because the Canucks suck. You know, he's watching our games. Uh, from afar, he's just looking like a point getter, right? A point producer, one of those type of, guy, type of guys. Now you have the whole league watching. Dakota Joshua knows it. And I think game in and game out, this guy's going to play with a ton of swagger. For that, for him to do that in his first playoff game in Vancouver, his second playoff game of all time, shows me that, again, is he the biggest X factor on this team? It's 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 ironic too because i guess i owe him an apology too i also owe an apology to tyler myers as well but we'll get to that in like five minutes going into the season this guy might have been a healthy scratch in game one he was the guy who was called out he really was he really was and like for me it's he's not really an important player he's just another forward now you you've had higher hopes for him you know you also heard it from rick tockett uh, a meter away from you when he mentioned that he believes that Dakota Joshua can be a 20 goal scorer, but man, oh man, this guy's just putting himself on like the real map in the NHL. I'm, I'm convinced that this guy can be a really good hockey player for a long time. Yeah, uh, you're right. I, I started talking about the game and I'll answer your first question about the motivational tactic. Look, I think there's a risk either way, right? You know, say they signed Dakota Joshua before the playoffs. Um, they might get him at a cheaper number, but if the Canucks, you know, bomb out in first round ro- and in, in the first round or something like that, and then it's like, Oh dang, you start handing out money to your secondary pieces on your team and you haven't accomplished anything. Right. Um, but I mean, the other risk is that what's happening right now, let's say the Canucks going along playoff run Dakota Joshua absolutely lights it up. And, you know, and now he's again, like you said, four and a half yeah. million dollars. I mean, look, when I said on the show, uh, maybe a couple months back that I think Dakota Joshua is going to make 4 million, uh, in the off season. Again, this is before the postseason. I think this is even before his injury. Yeah. Um, you know, people in the comments are like, oh, that's crazy. Even in our group chat, I people call it. me crazy. You yeah, you call me crazy, crazy too, what right? Are you talking but, about, man? but but I, again, look at look at his statistical profile this season. You know, top 10 in hits. I think he was on pace for 20 goals before the injury. Um, mm. you know, he and now he's a first a, a bona fide penalty killer, too. I mean, this guy does so much yeah. out there. There's not a lot of players in the NHL like to go to Joshua. Again, whether it's in Vancouver or somewhere else, this guy's getting paid, but hopefully it's in Vancouver because uh, I know it's just one game into the playoffs, but he's, uh, you know, over the past season turned into one of the most fun players on this team. And, and oh, yeah, he was named the team's unsung hero as well. So uh, it's, it's no secret Dakota here. Joshua <laughs> is one of the most noticeable players on this team right now. He is, and he's probably a big reason why the Vancouver Canucks are going to be looking to uh, get rid of that McKayev deal because 
No, it's honestly speaking, bro, because it's priority number one to sign Dakota Joshua going into next season. After this season's over, man. Okay, screw next season, man. What a what a time. What a game. Uh, one thing that I also want to talk about, okay, uh, is this moment in the first period that was absolutely beautiful. And I kind of forgot about it until I saw it in the comments, but it was that Thatcher Demko save. And yeah. you saw it from that moment that this guy was locked in. Now, people may question some of the goals they let in yesterday because they came from, you know, the, 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 the dot in the offensive zone, some wrist shots, blah, blah, blah. Dude. Thatcher Demko was on it, and you saw it in the third period as well, okay? That is why the Canucks have this potentiality to surprise a lot of people this season because Demko is – he's a top two goalie in the NHL. He makes things look too easy. And, again, going back to that first save, that was that was the play of the game. It, like As far as the individual athleticism standpoint, I know the Joshua goal is big, but that save was 10 out of 10. Yeah, and, and it's, we talk about Canucks making a statement. Look, that's your Demko made a statement last night with that save. Just like you said, Kyle, what, less than three minutes into the game? Yeah. I mean, that was one of the saves of the season. That was an unreal yeah. save. And I think, what was it, Jake Allen on the Sportsnet panel uh, in the intermission said that he there's no way he's making that save. And that most, uh, I think he said 90% of the goalies are not making that save because to do the splits like that and move cross crease at that Bro. speed, that was an unreal play by that Demko. My groin still hurts just from watching dude. that play last night, man. Unreal, uh, It was dude. unbelievable. But my groin again, hurts too, man. My groin hurts too, man. It's a lot of groin <laughs> feelings yesterday watching that game. Seeing that save, my groin hurts. Seeing the Canucks score t- two goals in 12 seconds, my gro- groin's like, yo, see? It's not, it's all good to, to do it in 12 seconds. Anyways, we just got this comment from a dude from China. He's watching from China, okay? Shout out to Cali. Or is it Kale? My bad. Shout out to Kale, man. Watching the show from Shanghai, man. One love to Groin Talk. One love to the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, Begsy, anything else you got to say before uh, we get to a break? Because if we don't, if we don't shut up, we'll be here for like seventy minutes. You and I have not done this in so long, and that's talk about an actual game that mattered that was played in Vancouver. It's uh, like I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah, I, I had goosebumps, chills, you know, some watery eyes a few times last night. I'll, I'll say one thing quick, and then we'll cut to break. Uh, we talk about in, in our title, the Vancouver Canucks and Dakota Joshua making a statement. Look, Dakota Joshua made a clear statement last night that he could be an impact player in the, in the playoffs. Thatcher Demko made a statement last night that he's one of the best goalies in the NHL. But let's touch on the team quickly. I think the Canucks made a statement that it doesn't matter what the game script is. The Canucks are going to be in hockey games. And we've seen that mm-hmm. all season long, right? You know, it felt like in past seasons when the Canucks were down by a goal that there was no way they were coming back. And we've had that feeling all season long that Mm -hmm. even when the Canucks are trailing, they could come back. I mean, you look at the stats, right? Um, The National Predators, I believe, are were 35-4-1 and when leading after two periods. The Canucks were 3-24-3 when trailing after two periods. Throw the stats out the window because it did feel like in that third period. Mm -hmm. Again, it was tense. They're trailing, but it felt like the Canucks were to come back. I think the statement they made is that they're going to stick to their game. And I know Tyler Meyer said a post game as well that, you know, maybe on past iterations of this team, they would have gotten to playing shinny hockey and just, you know, trying to play hero puck. The Canucks stuck to their game Ooh. and they were rewarded for it. And I think it's a statement that, you know, this team is not going to be an easy out uh, and that we could be in store for a long, long run. I'm just going to say it right now. Yeah. And you know what? Quinn Hughes called it a mature effort. And I think you kind of connected Quinn Hughes's post game statement to, again, your spiel that you just had over the last 30 seconds. And uh, speaking of being more mature, Bro, we're doing this, okay? 8.30 in the morning, every day, okay? We got you. We got you. Well, we'll be speaking the truth, and we'll be getting to your comments as well throughout the show. Man, oh, man, uh, this truly is the city show, and uh, I'm just I'm just happy for all of us, man. Let's, uh, let's bring that positive energy into Tuesday and hope for the best, man. As Trevor alluded to, I think the Canucks are going to show game in and game out that they're not going to cave. They're going to stick to their script, and they're going to lean on Demko to allow them to find points where they can break through. And we'll get to all that and more on the other side here on Locked on Canucks. Begsy, who you shouting out? All right, let's touch on some beauties from last night. Begsy and Bowen's beauties on the other side. Before we do that, let's shout out our friends over at FanDuel and Policy Genius. All right, guess what? It's playoff time. Playoffs? It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Baseball's also in full swing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On, make sure you go to FanDuel because it is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam docks to a Dakota Joshua hat trick, baby. Let's go. 
all in an app that's safe, secure, and super duper easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, they are America's number one sports book. All right, Policy Genius, a new sponsor on the show again. Welcome to the family, Policy Genius. They are the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money so you can provide your family with a financial safety net. You know, much like that uh, safety net that Thatcher Demko provided last night for your Vancouver Canucks. Let's go, baby. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just 292 bucks per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same-day approval and then vote unnecessary medical exams. That's right. No finger up the you-know-what with Policy Genius. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help talk you through it. Easily compare quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks and find the lowest price. Your work not offer enough, enough protection for your family's needs. Even worse, it may not come with you if you leave your job. <laughs> but again, Policy Genius, they got your back. And guess what? They got thousands of five-star reviews, thousands, on Google and Trustpilot from customers who found the best fit for their needs. Check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked or click the link in the description below to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on NHL. People, people, we back doing this, and that's talking about your Vancouver Canucks here at the Don't Doze Art Lab. Yes, the Don't Doze Art Lab, home of that West Coast bias. We've been doing it for the city for years and years and years and years, and that's, again, looking after our neighbors because, heck, heck, how are we going to look after the world if we're not even looking after our neighbors? It's just the truth. Now, speaking of the Don't Doze Art Lab, one of the members of this studio, okay, for real, he, he was at the game last night. He was also at Game 7 of 2011 all that time ago, okay? And I asked him, like, yo, can you just describe to me in a few words, like, what you kind of experienced uh, being that you're, you know, one of those guys, a 2011 attendee, and now you're here in 2024, evolved, yet still so connected with this team. And he told me this, okay? In his section, the person selling beer, the employee at Rogers Arena and the Vancouver Canucks, that person was crying during the entrance, the U2 entrance for your Vancouver Canucks. Think about that. Think about the emotion, okay? overtaken by emotion and people in the row or in that section that, that was near this girl handed her some tissues. Okay. To wipe those tears away, electrifying, uh, the emotion and just the camaraderie. Okay. Again, the city is together again. And I, I feel as if for years and years and years through social media, again, I'm addicted to my phone. So I'm on the phone a lot. I often see Vancouver rights complain about other Vancouver rights, not being friendly. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is a shallow place, and it's hard to connect with people here, especially strangers. And uh, I don't really believe in that because I've lived a different life. And B, at the same time, it's like maybe we're, we've kind of been like that because we've been losers for a long time. Again, that was the first playoff game in Vancouver in over 3,000 days. That's a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot's changed in both of our lives since then, buddy. But, uh, yeah, I think you know, sports, one of the great things about it is it brings people together, you know? And, uh, you know, we see it in our chat here if you're here on the YouTube Live. and um you know sports is about bringing fans together and you know in terms of the entrance song i'm not gonna lie you know heading into the playoffs i, I was kind of like i want to see something different you know like the you know the past is the past like let's let's move on from you know when mm -hmm. streets have no name let's move on it's a different like usher era. yeah right they should play usher <laughs> but, yeah right usher yeah that should be the intro song i was thinking <laughs> I was thinking a little bit more uh, like Enter Sandman or who for whom the oh. belt is. I don't know. I'm not the best uh, Enter Song guy, but I do I do like my rock and roll for sure. But uh, man, oh man, when they played that last night, I, I completely I completely reverted my take. I mean, it it, it gave me chills to see that man. I I, I probably could have cried yeah. too, to be honest. But you know, with the the kid with the white towel at center ice, the Canucks walking up to that song, and I know yeah. Miller mentioned it uh, post game, like the atmosphere and how. It was one of the best things aside from, you know, his wedding and the birth of his children. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it was an, <laughs> and that was a crazy quote, but that <laughs> entrance was insane, man. You know, we talk about Begsy and Bounds beauties. I think, you know, a beauty choice was going back to where the streets have no name. Cause that was for me, like hit me in the feels hard uh, for the start of this game. Yeah, man, whatever gets the juices flowing, it, it is what it is, right? I think sometimes I have my remarks about some of the uh, entertainment stuff that the Vancouver Canucks do outside of their game. 
But at the end of the day, it's it's really about the little things, right? AKA the real things, AKA the hockey players getting the job done. And bro, let's let's talk about it. I don't have a bump for Begsy's Beauties or Kyle's Little Things. Again, I'm the little thing expert. If you know what I'm talking about, if you've listened to the show day in and day out, you know that I just know how to handle the little thing, okay? And I notice little things. And one player that I really want to bring up that really impressed me last night, and I think he only got an assist last night, was Brock Besser. I mean, I have never yeah. seen Brock Besser skate that quick in his life. Keep in mind, this is the guy that's been quote unquote banged up. You know what I'm saying? And that just shows me that this guy's wired right now. This guy's living, breathing, everything hockey. He is so excited to do this. Obviously, he's had such a emotional relationship with the Vancouver Canucks and just in general with his life over the last couple of years. And for him to bring that type of energy into the playoffs, it it raises the floor of this team if this guy's that engaged. It also does this too, okay? We talked about it all the time, Trevor, going into – well, prior to the season, right? How a guy like Elias Patterson and his effort can sprinkle down and trickle down to the rest of the team, right? If your highest skill player is working that hard, chances are the other guys are going to do the same thing. I hope that that Brock Besser game and his effort has the similar effect on Elias Patterson. Now, I'm not going to go out and say that Elias Patterson wasn't trying yesterday, but there was just something way more intuitive about Besser's game yesterday. And it allowed him to be more straightforward. And I hope that carries over. Real talk, in general terms, just really impressed with Besser's effort last night. Yeah, I thought Bill, I thought Besser and Miller were were buzzing last night. And, you know, for me, one of the best plays from Besser was, uh, I think it was the third period where he had that saucer pass to Miller, uh, and Miller tips it just over the net. So a uh, pocket and uh, ultimately ends up missing the net. But holy heck, that was a beautiful saucer pass from Brock Besser right on the tape to JT Miller. And again, I thought that was... <sighs> I, I might be disrespecting Lindholm, Garland, and Joshua a bit, but I actually thought the Miller, Besser, and Suter line was the Cup's most dangerous line last mm-hmm. night um, in terms of creation. Obviously, they, they do combine for a goal. Suter tipping home the game tying goal there. Um, but if that's the best, the Miller and Besser we're going to see in these playoffs, uh, those guys are going to put up some points. The Canucks are, you know, going to be in a good spot with those two. And uh, I, I think maybe we'll touch on Elias Patterson maybe a bit more tomorrow or a bit more to wrap up the show because. Uh, again, it's, it's still full. Oh, we're back. talking about it. We're talking about it at the end of the show. We're doing it. Big factor, but uh, we'll touch that later because one of the beauties I want to mention was uh, Nikita Zadorov. And actually, I want to bring up Nikita Zadorov and Tyler Myers. Do it. Do it. I've been on this show before that, you know, both players are uh, a bit bombastic, right? They, they take risks. Uh, but I think we saw the best of both of them last night. I mean, Ty- I actually want to touch on Tyler Myers specifically. Tyler Myers played a great game last night. Uh, in terms of his work on the PK, he had a couple of good breakups to get the puck out of the zone, skating the puck up the ice in instances. It looked like Tyler Myers and Nikita Zadora both wanted to make plays last night offensively. Didn't get burned defensively, although there was one that one shift in the second where Zadora was buzzing uh, and Phil DiGiuseppe, I think, had to go back and cover for him. But both players, again, trying to get involved and not to mention the biggest thing about their games is their physicality. Yeah, I dude. mean, Nikita Zadora was just dummying guys last night. Tyler Myers was dummying guys last night. I mean, we mm-hmm. talked about the Canucks for quite some time being a bad defensive team. The Canucks for quite some time being soft to play against. They were anything but last night. I mean, obviously, the mm-hmm. whole team was hitting everything in their sight in the first period. But the, the key to Zadorov and Tyler Myers, I mean, that is an imposing couple of guys on defense for the opposition. And I think the National Predators got a taste of that last night. Both the key to Zadorov and Tyler Myers finished with five hits on the night. Yeah, clean games from both of them defensively as well. Confident games. When you see that type of performance, again, it raises the floor. It, it kind of goes back to that point you were making about how the Canucks will be able to stay in games for a number of reasons, mainly because of the structure and them not caving in and not panicking. And, and I think, again, they're going to be able to stay in games because the depth of this team, you know, what? We, not to always bring up Pedersen, but like when some guys are not going, it's good to know that other guys are. And when some guys are not going, a big hit, and we know this. We've been around, okay? We've seen a lot of playoff games. A big hit can change the whole game. And those two were looking for hits the whole game. So Dorov was just clean yesterday. Again, another guy. Another guy. Now, I don't know if the Vancouver Canucks are, quote-unquote, really interested in extending Nikita Zodorov. Maybe he's already priced himself out. But why would you want to sign this guy going into the playoffs when you probably want him to, again, be a little desperate? And this guy's a swaggy dude, a really swaggy dude. He wants to make a name for himself. Let him do that. Let him shine. 
let him want to let him want to prove a point to not only the organization but the rest of the league. You might get the best out of him, and when you get the best out of him, th- this is a bold statement, but he kind of looks like a top four D man. He does, maybe like your fourth guy, not your third guy, but he looks like that guy. Now, will he will he have to play minutes like that? Probably not. Now, I know we only saw Quinn Hughes play twenty two minutes yesterday. I think penalty kills had a lot to do with that, but. Dude, Zadorov is just mad impressive game in and game out for the most part. And that's surprising to me because I always thought that this guy was just going to look and feel like a number six guy. And honestly, when he came to this market, Kyle, he was a number six guy, right? It, it, ironically, it was kind of after that suspension against the Red Wings where he came yeah. back from his two game suspension there. And he's looking like a top 40 event ever since. And you look at the ice time last night, and right, PK played a part of it, but very spread out between all four blue liners. I mean, Quinn Hughes. Uh, plays 22 minutes, but uh, the rest of them, Susie just under 18 and Hronik just over yeah. 20 and everyone kind of sandwiched in between. So, um, but yeah, Nikita Zadorov, it's not a bold statement to say he looks like a top four guy because he's looked like a top four guy for a couple months now. Yeah. Uh, now, contract wise, uh, does he deserve the big bucks? I think that's a conversation for another day because I look at the Toronto Maple Leafs who need some help on defense, don't look great in game one. Uh, you got a GM there who uh, obviously likes the player and has a history wow. with him. So, but that's a that's a story for another day. Nikita Zadorov again. Uh, him and Dakota Joshua, again, two guys in line for big contracts who both looked great last night. So, yeah, that's good for them. Um, Kyle, let's wrap up the show talking about – I want to talk a bit about some of the lineup decisions made both in-game and pre-game, uh, and then we'll kind of tease uh, what we want to talk about on uh, tomorrow's episode of Locked on Canucks. Let's wrap up the show. Before we do that, we got to shout out our friends over at Game Time. Hey, you know the deal. I'm, if you're looking for playoff tickets – or tickets of any kind, you got to go to game time, okay? You know I me, mean? I'm a big last-minute deals guy, and I know that the best place for killer deals at the last minute on tickets is game time, okay? You know why that's the case? Because game time, they got the lowest price guarantee, baby. You can't beat that. Lowest price guarantee. Remember that when you shop on game time, okay? And, you know, I always got these, I get these emails from Nicole at game time, always teasing me, okay? With the concerts and events this week in my area, and specifically those Canucks tickets, baby. Those Canucks tickets, the Canuck playoff mm-hmm. tickets at game time, okay? With the lowest price guarantee. And, hey, if you're looking for a little deal on tickets, because it's expensive, man. I'm going to have to take out the mortgage on them. But, hey, if you use uh, game time, make sure you use code Locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase, okay? Download the game time app, create an account, and, again, use that code Locked on NHL for $20 off. Dell the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Man, we're going to have a lot of fun tonight in Vancouver, all my real fans. People, people, we doing this, and that's starting off the day with Canucks talk, with optimism talk, with delusion talk, okay? No, straight up. I'm proud of us, man. I'm proud of Begsy. I'm proud of bowing myself. I'm proud of you and you and you and you because I feel as if we have a lot of people that have stuck with us all season long and they've kind of they kind of heard us, again, be delusional because we've talked about the Stanley Cup for quite some time. Back in August, we talked about it. I think mainly because we're fans first. We're going to hope for the best, right? We really are. And again, me and Trevor are getting older. We're 31 years old pretty soon here. I don't want to be that guy, okay? On the deathbed at 99 years old or 104 and not having a Stanley Cup ring on my finger. On that note, I promise you, when the Vancouver Canucks win the Stanley Cup this year, I'm getting that replica ring, and I'm putting it on my hands, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear it like a wedding ring. I'm going to wear it every day until I get married. Speaking of which, we had a comment on the last episode, and we're going to get to all the comments on this live show pretty soon here, okay? A lot of people talking about Pedersen. Uh, we had a comment on an episode that you dropped over the weekend with the Locked On Predators podcast, right? And the comment was like, yo, the show's way better when uh, Kyle's not on it. I'm paraphrasing, but this is what they said. The show's way better when Kyle's not on it because Kyle talks about too many other things outside of just hockey. And this is a hockey show. And he's always bringing up his girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares. I'm like, dude, come on. I'm whipped. Okay. I love my girlfriend. Trevor's whipped too. I learned, I learned from this guy, you know, how to treat a lady and you got to be whipped. Okay. So it is what it is straight up. But on that note, I'm wearing the wedding ring. Before I no, I'm wearing the Stanley Cup ring before I get my wedding ring. That's the goal in life. There you go, buddy. Hey, you, you always tell me this that uh, the Vancouver Canucks were your first love, and uh, you know I I was in love with the Vancouver Canucks long before I was in love with my wife and kids. You always make sure to remind me of yeah, that. Man. 
Um, I wasn't necessarily in love with some of Tockett's decisions prior to the game. I mean, putting Sam Lafferty back on Pedersen's line, to me, felt strange because, you know, we've seen that yeah. throughout the regular season. It's something that hasn't worked that well. I think he wants McKayev up there, but he, I think he wants it to, uh, uh, he wants McKayev to earn his, his right on that line. And again, he switched it uh, mid game again, but uh, Colin, I was curious on your thoughts about, you know, the decision to put Lafferty on that line, go yeah, back to McKayev mid game. And then, and then again, to go to the lotto line for a few shifts there as well. That's something we hadn't seen in a couple of months though. So I found that a bit surprising. Bro, I hated it. Okay, so you're telling me that you're going to put your lineup in a blender for two months, two consecutive months, right? And then you have game 82 in Winnipeg in a meaningless game. And you don't use that game as uh, like a way to get Lafferty some minutes or like, I, I didn't know, look at the lineup that game. Maybe Lafferty did play with Pedersen and, and, and Hoaglander, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it just seemed to be the wrong time to pull another move like that, another stunt like that. I'd even bring it even further and talk about the whole PDG thing. Like, why is Phil DiGiuseppe not playing any games towards the end of the season? And it's like, you know what? Maybe this moment is too big for Pod Colson. Let's get PDG in the game. Real talk. Real talk. I didn't like that. It's it's too many last-minute changes, and I feel as if it was actually getting, like, if the Canucks, like, honestly speaking, we had a comment here from Risotto. And Risotto, come on, can you put a smile on your face once in your life? Come on. Look what he said, okay? Uh, that, that was a garbage game. Uh, luckily, uh, we are playing the beep, beepest team, okay? The, the poopiest team in the playoffs, and it was still a struggle. To be honest, I'm not going to front. We are a little lucky on that note because the Canucks for like 35 minutes looked like they did over the last two months offensively, and I think that had a lot, lot to do with the inconsistencies in the lines. It really did, and I think Talkett knew that too because that ish was in a blender for the last 40 minutes. And I think you're kind of playing with fire in that regard. You know, I'll take it a step further, okay? Uh, we'll, we'll be live for like five more minutes. I, I promise we'll get to the comments. Do you, do you think, like, talk it, should talk to Patterson and ask him, like, yo, who do you want to play with? Because I, I, when you're that low on confidence, I feel as if there needs to be a bit of a report there instead of giving Patterson different linemate after different linemate after different linemate. It just makes it kind of impossible for this guy to get a, a grip on Five on five play. Now I know there's a lot of people out there that are saying, "No, Pedersen should figure it out on his, figure it out on his own." But Begsy, man, you you called me in the morning to tell me this, man. Like you can see it ev evidently. Like Pedersen is not confident right now. In life, sometimes you need help, and right now Pedersen needs help. Yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, you, you make a great point there, and yeah, I, I just feel like Pedersen right now, again, especially with playoff hockey, the game is so fast, right? And you just see Pedersen kind of double clutching a bit, like unsure of whether to pass or or shoot uh sometimes trying to play hero puck i mean he's reacting on instincts but the instincts aren't quite there look i thought his defensive game was pretty good he did have a turnover or two uh but defensively for the most part he was pretty pretty solid had a couple of breakups uh, obviously was throwing the body last night too like he looks engaged he just he's lacking a bit of confidence right now and i wouldn't be surprised if him and talking have had that conversation already but who he wants to play with i think that's you know part of the reason why hoogland is up on that line as well one of his best buddies on the team and someone who they you know they have some chemistry together but yeah, it's kind of one of this uh, floating clouds about the Vancouver Canucks right now. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to talk about it for sure uh, throughout this run until they figure it out. But man, I do want to focus a last and a bit more on the comments before, before we get out of here. And shout out to this comment yeah. from Head. He said, you know, he's not ashamed to admit that he cried. It's been nearly half his life uh, yeah. since there was that kind of energy. The whole crowd was volcanic last night. Insane atmosphere. He loves this team. I, yeah. Again, especially with the two goals in 12 seconds last night. I hadn't cheered like that in a long time. And, and you yeah. know what? I, I did probably cheer that hard during the bubble playoffs, but it just feels different when it's April, the sun is shining, there's hockey in Rogers Arena. It's not some weird hockey in the middle of August. But man, oh man, I mean, again, I felt good last night, especially in that third period, but it's tense. And with those two goals scored, I was almost embarrassed about how hard I cheered in front of my wife. Like, she's just like, <laughs> really? Because, like, again, when we talk about, Canuck uh, admits it or uh, points it out, but been nearly half his life since the Canucks been in this position. I didn't even live with my wife. Uh, yeah. Last the Canucks a whole playoff game. Now I'm married with two kids, man. I've lived with my wife for nine years. We moved in right after the uh, uh, Canucks lost to the Flames in 2015. So it's crazy <laughs> to think that uh, you know I've been with her for this long and uh, we haven't really watched a, a Canucks playoff game together in yeah. April, man. It's just just wild. So she doesn't really know like this version of you. And I was talking <laughs> to my girlfriend about that too because I didn't really text her for like four hours. And I think I got a little bit of attitude towards the end of the night. But man, it's just a different time. Like, 
my energy is in different places. There's a lot's going on in my mind. And when it's the intermissions, I just want to talk in the Canuck group chat. You know what I'm saying? Or the Discord, man. Uh, we got a Discord, okay? The link is in the bio. We're always talking on there, right? We always are doing that. Uh, we're always talking on here, too. Speaking of which, look at this comment from Jacob, okay? Pedersen will come through. It's a long series. Yo, Pedersen had 18 people at the game last night. Talk about the pressure, man. <laughs> Bro, it's the it's game one of the first round. You know what I'm saying? How about this, okay? From Kale again, okay? From Shanghai. He's tricking the opposition. I think he's talking about Rick Tockett. There's definitely some of that mind game slash tactic that he's using. And that's, again, the surprise button, right? We never really saw the lotto line over the last 40 games of the season, the last 30 games of the season. And this guy showed it four times yesterday. I know we're going to see it more. I know we're going to see it more. And when I talk about us seeing it more, it's going to be those offensive zone faceoffs. And if five on five, the game's not going well for the Vancouver Canucks, the lotto line is going to see its time. And eventually they're going to come through. And if they get one, they might get three because they're that good. And that's how you win another game in the playoffs. And the last comment, uh, I'll bring it up. Uh, Hoaglander, uh, this is from Amphimus, one left to Amphimus. He's also part of the Discord. Again, link in the bio. Hoaglander was quiet, but we were also shorthanded a lot. And he's the five on five master. He looked a little, how do I say it? He was, I, I feel as if he was moving too quick. You know what I'm saying? Like a little bit of nerves. He's like, this guy loves hockey. He's a gamer. Look how intense he is. I think he just needed that that first game as a as a trial, and we'll see the best of him moving forward. Hey, if I'm going to bring up Hoaglander, I got to bring up Connor Garland because those guys are the smallest guys on the team. Bro, once again, Connor Garland. I love how we're ending the show on this note. I have no doubt in my mind in the statement. Over the last 30 games and at this moment, he is our second best forward. And this team has Brock Bester and Elias Patterson below him in that in that power rankings of forward. This team is stacked. If Connor Garland continues to play like this, this team is stacked because he's playing like he's one of the best. I, I don't want to say that one of the best players in the NHL, but there's something that he brings to the game that a lot of players don't bring, and he does it shift in and shift out. So impressed with Connor Garland. Man, that's almost an idea for an episode. Uh, the yeah. power rankings of the Canucks forwards because. Uh, Ooh, uh, I want to argue with you on that one, but it's hard because Connor Garland's has been so unreal for this hockey team. Uh, what an unreal game one of the playoffs here, Vancouver Canucks. Again, Locked On Canucks, your Canucks every day. We're to talk about all of it, okay? Every day uh, throughout this playoff run. Connor will be back tomorrow morning uh, as well. And uh, again, Locked On Canucks, your Canucks every day. Go like us, subscribe us. Follow yeah. us on YouTube where every list of podcasts come along for the journey. Hopefully it's a long one, uh, but we do got to get out of here. Uh, you know, I want to shout out again, the, the, um, the every day is the occasional listeners, the first time listeners welcome the new subscribers. And those of you who join us on the live YouTube show. Again, we love each and every one of you go Canucks go let's do it, baby. Let's go get that cup, but let's get out of here for now. I'm Trevor yep. Banks. That's Kyle Bowen. And you've been listening to locked on Canucks. Hey, one love to Patterson, man. He's picking it up, okay? You heard it here for the 18th time in a row. Uh, we're getting desperate. Anyways, go Canucks, go. 